Namaste, Jai Swaminarayan, good evening. Our distinguished guest for this evening, Dr. Pujya Gyanvatswal Swamiji, past president Mukesh Bhai Patel, our vice president, Dr. Savan Gordiawala, our members, ladies and gentlemen. We are really truly honored to have Pujya Gyanvatsal Swamiji with us today as the inaugural speaker of this week-long celebration that commemorates 25 years of this AMA campus. Swamiji, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and uh, choosing a very relevant topic and gracing the occasion. Uh, on behalf of AMA and all of you, I will Welcome, Swamiji, with a bouquet. <clears throat> 
as you are all aware, AMA was founded by the legendary Dr. Vikram Sarabhai way back in 1956. Hence, we are, it's AMA 65 years old. And, you know, in view of the rapid growth of activities, you know, this AMA project was a dream project, uh, complex, AMA complex project was a really a dream project during the 10 years of our past presidents, uh, Shrimati Karuna Ben Shah and Mukesh Bhai Patel, who is very much there. So during his... Uh, so, you know, with support from Atira, we got the land and then were numerous supporters and honors from their contributions. This premises was done and it was built in a record time of 10 months and inaugurated on 31st August 1997. So that's why we are celebrating this week, commemorating that. And, you know, over the years, we have a wide spectrum of activities, you know, covered through what is known as our virtual activity centers. So, you know, in our previous premises, we had six or seven, and now we have over 50 activity centers. And this is one of them. This is the Mamta AMS Center for Indian Wisdom for Management, under which auspices we are having these activities. And this is one of our oldest, uh, almost three decades old activity center and sponsored by uh, Mr. Mahindra Bhai Patel of Mamta Group. And this was formed when AMA was our previous office at uh, Navarangpura, basically. And in the 80s, AMA had organized programs connecting modern management practices with our ancient Indian wisdom. So this was the wonderful blend. And you know, all of you know that in so many management books and management thinkers, so many, if you just go deep, there are so many, you know, uh, you know, gems of wisdom from our own you know, scriptures like the uh, Vedas and the Gita and Upanishads and all that. So this was a wonderful connect. And uh, over the years, so many, you know, lectures, seminars on these topics have been covered. We have had renowned national international speakers coming here. And many of you know that our popular AMA Wisdom Weeks, which we did for 25 years. So we had, uh, you know, all halls full and then additional place for the projection. So it's really been the God's grace, a vibrant activity. <coughs> and you've all witnessed all that. So before I, I request Mukesh Bhai to introduce Swamiji, we will, you know, in our Indian tradition, we will light the lamp as marking the inauguration of this week long festivity. So I request Swamiji Mukesh Bhai, please to come over there. I request uh, Mukesh Bhai to introduce Swamiji and the theme. Thank you. Good evening and a very warm and hearty welcome on this momentous occasion, if I were to say so, when we are indeed blessed to have the blessings of the Lord through one of the most saintly persons, one whom I think 
whoever has known about has been absolutely overawed by how he manages. In fact, Swamiji, you could have been one of the role models for management. The way you manage your time, the way you manage your schedules and the way he manages motivation. You know, he is a life coach. If you read his profile, you would see that he's a bachelor in engineering. But I would say when it comes to life engineering, probably he should be given the highest doctorate for that. Because there is no subject touching the life of a human being that he must not have spoken on. Be it the body, be it the mind, be it the spirit. And when he speaks, he enchants, he mesmerizes. It would not even be an overstatement to say that he could very well hypnotize. <laughs> Goddess Saraswati, I think, must have taken all her time to make a soul and a spirit like him. Friends, I am absolutely delighted to introduce to you on this occasion and we actually, I would say, handpicked him because we were very keen. We have had all these years the privilege of, I would like to remember on this occasion, with great admiration and respect, Pooja Swami Brahmavyari Das Ji, who in the H.T. Parekh Convention Center and in this very auditorium, he has adorned more than a dozen times on the occasion of our 25 AME weeks on Indian Wisdom for Management. We were looking forward to Pujya Swami Gyanavatsalji, and as his name suggests, when you look at a perfect blending of knowledge that is delivered in a most affectionate style, you know, it, it gets into absolutely so smooth and perfect touches your mind and hearts that you would always want to listen to him again and again. Friends, over 30 countries, hundreds of subjects and thousands of his talks and speeches. I think the social media is virtually, you know, if you have a subject interest for spirituality, wisdom, motivation, you just cannot miss him because he's here, there, and everywhere. But today, in fact, when I called him, I, I had a very special request. And I said, Sir, Swamiji, uh, my request is give AMA something it deserves as a special gift on this momentous occasion of its Silver Jubilee celebration at this campus. And let your subject be a virgin. You know, let it be a maiden topic, maybe that you have never, ever spoken. Imagine that itself must have been a challenge for him because he's hardly left anything untouched. But then this beautiful subject of the universal wisdom, values, Versus valuables. How beautifully coined, friends. I am reminded of this couplet, Swamiji, of uh, a Sufi shire. And he said, Bohot kamaya jagme kya hire kya moti. Bohot kamaya jagme kya hire kya moti. 
लेकिन ये मत भूल यार कफन को जेब नहीं होती यू नो वेन यू हैव टू लीव दिस वर्ल्ड नो वैल्यूएबल इज गोइंग टू ट्रेवल विथ यू एंड देर इज नो एक्सेप्शन वेदर यू नो यू टॉक ऑफ हु रॉकफेलर और द अंबानी friends they what are we leaving behind us as long fellow said lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time and these footprints on the sands of time are what we talk of as values values that have preserved families societies cultures traditions civilizations and therefore i think it's going to be an enlightening and chanting experience scintillating when he is going to unfold his thoughts on this beautiful subject friends just one last word about libert swami ji because he represents bas and we know what is the reach and what is the stretch of this phenomenal institution but i will never forget you know my first visit to akshardham because that was when you know it actually mirror imaged what i was always thinking about and as you enter the first akshardham now there are many akshardhams all over the globe but the 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 seed was sown here in our own gandhinagar you enter the akshardham museum market and you have that beautiful message across you which says with lovely sculpture there you are the chisel you the stone and you the sculptor life is what you make it friends if we all remember this you know that we are a block of stone but then it is from that stone that the most beautiful statue is created and there is nobody else than you yourself the sculptor who can do that and for which you should have your own equipment your chisel what a beautiful and as i said when it comes to these lovely messages of engineering for your life friends i think we are all blessed on this occasion to be able to listen revered swami gyanavatsal ji and i would request all of you to please rise and give him a thundering applause you know as swami ji the asia cup is going on and you know very well whether it is world cup asia cup ipl whenever you have a player who plays for the team the first time everybody stands up and gives a salute you have been at ama for many other forums but on the ama home ground and for ama we welcome you with open arms and we would say that this is just the beginning just as we have had the privilege of welcoming pooja ramavihari das ji you know we would want that we make a pair in his company with you thank you thank you so much and may i now invite him friends we've decided uh, swami ji will speak and after that uh he loves you know the in fact when he speaks also he is going to evoke a lot of interaction but nonetheless we would we would like to devote some time at the end of his speech for some select questions uh requesting you to please send in a slip because it would not be very practical that you stand up and ask so please send us a slip we'll try to within the time available 
do the best and hold your hearts as we start for a great evening. Divya Swami. गुणातीतोंक्षर ब्रह्म भगवान पुरुषोत्तम जनो जानिद सत्यम उच्यते भवबंधना विथ प्रोस्ट्रेशन एट द डिवाइन फीट ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण माय गुरु हरि परम पूज्य प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज एंड माय प्रगट गुरु हरि परम पूज्य महंत स्वामी महाराज माई हार्टीएस्ट नमस्कार जय श्री कृष्ण जय स्वामी नारायण एंड अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग एस्पेशली द पर्सन कनेक्ट बिटवीन आस एल्डर एंड गुड फ्रेंड मुकेश भाई पटेल द पास प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एम ए दिव्यश भाई द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इज बैरर्स द टीम एंड ओल the respected citizens in the audience today well it is a pride and privilege a moment for me as well to be a small minuscule part of the ama silver jubilee celebrations the ama campus completes 25 years today and we applaud with a inner feeling of congratulations and best wishes that the same way it continues for the next 25 years to have the golden jubilee celebrations <laughs> the another 25 years for the platinum jubilee celebrations and then another 25 year for the centenary celebrations as we are celebrating the birth centenary celebrations of pramukh sai maharaj this year so <laughs> that well that's god god's wish but then on the occasion of pramukh swami maharaj's birth centenary celebrations that we are having for one month from 15th december to 15th of january i extend my heartfelt wishes and my innermost prayers to ama that they may also be so successful in the journey like baps to celebrate their centenary celebrations in the presence of at least five heads of states well coming to the topic that has been shared with me universal wisdom values versus valuables when we talk of wisdom the indian and the universal wisdom basically teaches us nitimay jeevan a life full of morals disciplines ethics and norms If you live a life of such values you are a human being. If you put aside these values we are nothing more than an ordinary animal. This distinguishes us from the animals. Dharma gneya sadachara is a wisdom. All the good conduct is religion. So good conduct thereby a pure character and thereby a life of inspiration for decades for centuries and for ages for people is a human life mukesh bhai mentioned about the asia cup and the world cup let also me start with cricket it was 1987 when the world cup was played in india and pakistan jointly and the quarter finals match between west indies and pakistan west indies batted first pakistan was into the play they were into the last wicket abdul qadir and wasim jafar were at the crease 
and the great West Indian pace bowler, the first pace bowler in the world to have 500 test wickets in his kitty, Cutney Walsh was bowling. And Walsh, at the end of his run-up, towards the crease, was just about to put the ball. And Vasim Jaffa left the crease for a quick single, whether the ball corrects the bat of the batsman or not. Abdul Kadir was at the striking end. Vasim Jafar at the non-striking end. Cutney Walsh did not bowl. He asked Vasim Jafar to get back into the crease. See, he had a choice. He could have run out him, which is popularly known in cricket as Mankad. He could have done that, but he did not. He asked Vasim Jafar to get back into the crease and went back to his run-up. He bowled. On this side, West Indies needed one wicket to win the quarterfinals and enter into the semi-finals. On the other side, West Indies, Pakistan needed just two runs to enter the semi-finals. They scored it. For the first time in the history of World Cup, West Indies was out of the World Cup in the preliminary rounds. When he was walking back to the pavilion, 70,000 crowd at the Gaddafi Stadium rose on their feet to applaud the value to applaud the spirit of the game that Cutney Walsh had shown. 1975, the West Indies were the champions. 1979, they were the champions. 1983, they were the final. They, came, they entered the finals. They lost against India. For the first time, they were out before the semi-final encounter. When Cutney Walsh bowled his last delivery in an international match, at his hometown in Trinidad and Tobago. Australia Channel 9 prime commentator Richie Beno said at the end of the day when the team was coming back, seeing Courtney Walsh leading the team back, bowling his last international delivery, Richie Beno said, here comes the last of the gentlemen cricketers. And thereafter, the age of match fixing and sport fixing started. <laughs> Values were replaced by valuables. The age of match fixing and sport fixing. Years later, when Courtney Walsh was interviewed by BBC Cricket, he was asked that why did you prefer to make the other choice? You, you knew that you could have Officially, legally, taken your team into the semi-finals. Courtney Walsh said something which is a source of inspiration for all of us today. So high regards for values, Courtney Walsh said, I was not raised to do that. The way in which I was raised by my parents, I was taught cricket by my coach. I cannot do that. I cannot run out a person in such a way before once giving him a warning. Again, BBC asked him because they wanted something spicy from his mouth. As normally these people want. Again, he was asked that did, were you aware that your this action could lead West Indies from the exit? He said, I knew it. Then why didn't you do it? Again, he said, the spirit of the game was so high valued in my heart that today when you are asking me this question, for the first time, I'm getting a thought in my mind that I had a second choice. At that time, I thought I had only one choice and that to give the warning to the non-strikers batsman. He becomes a source of inspiration. He's a valued person. And today, maybe like more than 30 years hence, 35 years hence, in the opening session of the Silver Jubilee of AMA campus, we have very fondly remembered Courtney Walsh. I want to share another incident with you. You might all have heard the name of Maradona, the great footballer. All have heard the name of Michel Platini, the great French footballer. 
1986, Maradona led Argentina to a World Cup victory. In 1990, the world football, that is FIFA, they decided to have a charity match, the proceeds of which will go forward to help those footballers who had not earned enough or those footballers, children, for better education. So a charity match was decided. One team was led by Maradona. The other team was led by Michel Platini. Along with that, they had thought of this as well, to induce some more values in the lives of footballers, especially against corruption and against drugs. So Maradona and his team, they had worn a t-shirt, say no to drugs. Michel Platini and his team had worn the t-shirt, say no to corruption. In between them as the match referee was the great Pele of Brazil. The match was played in a packed stadium. They must have collected hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well distributed for the purposes for which the charity match was played. A few years later, Maradona was caught possessing drugs, intake of drugs, and he was suspended from football for six months. He could not stand the value for which he once stood just because of attraction towards valuables. In 2015, Michel Platini was banned for life from holding any post in football in any club. You don't have to step on the football ground on the charges that the ethics committee of FIFA had put on him and proved the charges of corruption of said perhaps more than 5 million euros. So even Michel Platini could not stand by the values that he once stood for. For? Say no for? Corruption. Both of them failed. And today, they are not an inspiration for the youth. Today, we don't remember them with that regards that we remember Courtney Walsh. What I mean to say is, to think of values, to live by values, and to sustain those values in your hearts and minds, lifetime, which ultimately becomes your character, is definitely a challenge. But when we hear of such happenings in the society, we are definitely inclined towards living a value-based life because values that don't hold the power to hold your life together when you fail on values. Valuables don't hold the power to hold your life together when you fail on values. Do you agree with me? And on the other side, values, they hold the power to bring your life back on track when you have lost valuables. This is the big difference between values and valuables. Values have the power to make you immortal. As Courtney Walsh is an immortal personality, not in the, just in the game. But at the same time, through ages, till the sun and the moon shines upon this earth, Courtney Walsh would be remembered. Many such incidents in lives of many public figures. But this is a clear aspect of life that values can make your life valuable, break your life. I sometimes jokingly say, in a lighter moment. That even if you are the king of the skies, you have to leave India without an Indian passport if you lose on values. Even if you have become the Sahara of thousands of families and given them homes, you can still lie Bay Sahara in Tihar for four years. <laughs> if you lose on values. If you play to deshape, overshine, or undershine a cricket ball, 
you definitely incur a life ban on yourself. You know the names, so I'm not calling out the names. Those people who tried to deshape, overshine or undershine the cricket ball, they had to leave cricket. Yes or no? Those who played with the banks, they had to leave the country. A few are in London, a couple of them in the Caribbean. They'll all be brought back. <laughs> Values are the most important assets of your life. Values have the power to create valuables. Valuables don't stand the power to create values. So Stephen Covey, in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, writes that imagine you are dead. Your near and dear ones, friends are around you. And if God graces you the power to listen while you are dead, what would you like to listen about yourself from your near and dear ones or the people who work with you, people who associated with you? To hear that after your death, your whole life of 60, 70, 80 years, you have to live on values. Money can buy you a good bed, but it does not have the capacity to give you a good sleep. Isn't it? Money can buy you a good house. It does not have the capacity to turn that house into a home. Money can buy you the best of jewelry and branded cloths. It does not have the power to give you handsomeness and beauty. Money can buy you a good health care plan. It does not have the power to give you health. So if there are 100 things that money can buy, there are 1,000 things that money cannot buy, still you need it to become happy. This is the power of values. See, paneer, curd, butter, buttermilk, all are made up of milk. Still their prices in the market are different. They are basically milk products, but their prices are different. In the same way, we have all been given human life by God. Our prices means two things. A total life satisfaction at the end of your life and your image, your place in the hearts and minds of people. It depends upon what value you attach to your life. We all got human, human life. What values you attach with it are more important. And basically, they are the foundation of a great life. But you know, in the 20th century and the 21st century man's life, we are less on understanding, really less on understanding that values are more important than valuables. Still, we run after valuables at the cost of values. We are less on understanding on this. I just exemplified. Wheat vadas and samosas fried in spoiled oil. Wheat pani puris, the puri filled with pani, that is water, unhygienic. We may eat like vegetables and fruits laden with fertilizers. We drink black liquid, the cold drinks. Two big brand names. We chew and smoke tobacco as if there is no tomorrow. With all this doing, if for some reason, someday we go to a doctor for some illness and doctor prescribes, we with all seriousness in our heart and mind just tell the doctor, doctor, I think you are confident in prescribing this. This medicines don't have a side effect, isn't it? You tell the doctor that, doctor, please, I think the medicines don't have the side effect. Then what about you eating samosas and vadas <laughs> in unhygienic spoiled oil and eating pani puris on roadside with unhygienic water filled in it and without chewing and eating tobacco as if there is no tomorrow. At that time, you don't think of the side effects of it. Every day, 82 people die in India because of tobacco-related cancer. Every day. 
so we are less on understanding that values are more important than valuables we go after valuables at the cost of values as i exemplified that that we go after taste at the cost of our health this is a clear exemplification of it we go for taste at the cost of our health that means our mind is definitely inclined towards going towards valuables at the cost of values as simple as that you have to attach your values to valuables only your valuables then will shine see i am not against valuables your possession of a fine bungalow or an apartment is a human dignity human endeavor human duty your possession of a fine car your possession of branded clothes i'm not against it i'm not against you wearing any branded items fine if you enjoy it if you want it if you can afford it definitely you can well i am wearing the most old branded clothes ever upon this planet <laughs> i'm not against it but don't compromise on values any valuable has to be attached by a value to make it shine see talent and looks are god given isn't it you have to be thankful that thankfulness is prayers at least remembering him in a day in once in a day in the morning out of lakhs of people upon this earth some are extraordinary talented out of lakhs of people upon this earth some has good looks well standing in front of the mirror everybody feels that just a 5% betterment on my face i would have worked in one of the woods bollywood hollywood tollywood collywood follywood any of the woods that everybody feels when he or she stands in front of the mirror but talent and looks are absolutely god given they are valuables but you have to attach a value to it and that is be thankful be humble if you go for egoistic behavior because of your talent and looks you will spoil that valuable one day because you did not attach a value called being thankful to that valuable fame and money are valuables given to you by society talent and looks by god fame and money by society by people there also you have to attach a value to it and that value is being grateful that value is being so grateful that you give back to the society if after having fame and money you don't care for the society you don't care for the less privileged people you don't give back to the society in some other way that the resources that you possess you are not being grateful to the society so fame and money are good valuables but you have to attach a value called being grateful to it to make it shine otherwise they will go dull attitude and ego are self designed valuables attitude and ego are self designed valuables i don't know exactly they are valuables or not but we prefer to call it valuables because we wear them 24 7 365 80 do you get what I, did you get what i said 25 by 7 is 24 hours a day 7 days a week 365 days of the year and 80 is 80 years of your life 24 7 365 80 we wear ego and attitude as attire in our facial expressions in our body language in our in our words we feel that it is a valuable i have earned it it is not a valuable still we prefer to call it a valuable even then you have to attach a value to it and that value is be careful if you are not careful about your attitude and ego times will come days are not far that you will be minimized to your original stature by people society and happenings so talent and looks are god given be thankful fame and money are society given be grateful 
attitude and ego are self given be careful what does this mean this means that possession of any valuable you will have to attach a value to it otherwise that valuable may not be with you it will fall down it will it will lose its shine a value has to be attached to every valuable as i talked about the money story values are always most important values should be in life so that your valuables shine with all the valuables in your life if you are less on values you may lose all of it someday and with all the good values in your life and absolute zero on valuables still you can live forever in the hearts and minds of people let me give you a case study let us have a case study of a comparison between elvis presley and mirabai in the common terminology both were singers elvis presley and mirabai in the common terminology both were singers for elvis presley his biographer has written that he is only the second person in history to become famous by the first name that is elvis after jesus christ jesus no biography has ever been written about mirabai elvis presley when he was just 21 years age there were 78 presley products in the market mirabai did not endorse any product we are having a case study elvis presley has self fund more than about 500 million dollars mirabai had to wait for some donor for a meal at least one meal a day at the bakke bihari temple Elvis Presley had a very good audience a town hall of this type or a stadium every day in the evening when mirabai sang at the bakke bihari temple there was no audience more than 500 million records of elvis presley have been sold we don't have a single record of mirabai when elvis presley used to travel for by road there was a cavalcade of seven limousine cars when the president of america did not have a limousine car elvis presley had seven each one of them studded with diamonds on the paint so from a distance the shining cars the cavalcade would come mirabai if she had to go from one place to another she had to walk she did not have a car Elvis Presley when he would fly there were two boeings one would carry him and his entourage with an inbuilt bath facility and bedroom and everything and the second jet would take his stage and pa system and everything mera bad nothing of the sort so now perhaps you would tell me swami ji why did you start this case study isn't it case study a comparison should be between two people of equal status yes or no two people of equal status and why did you you would all say waste our time in a comparison in a case study between elvis presley and mirabai now let me give you a better picture of it once elvis presley was trying to compose his most famous composition how great dawat and his secretary she just entered the room and you said sir how are you feeling you are at the peak of your fame because when elvis presley doing his famous swivel on the stage putting his two hands on the ground and then he would swivel and after that he would he would open up his leather jacket and throw in the audience within minutes that leather jacket would be torn into small pieces and people would take as a memory as a souvenir and today in many houses in america on the in the sitting room in the showcase you would see a small piece of jacket and people would proudly say that once i attended elvis live 
The secretary said that, sir, you are at the peak of your fame. How are you feeling? Elvis Presley dropped his two hands apart from the piano and said, I'm feeling alone. And really, he was feeling alone in the midst of so many people. Such a good gathering and audience every day that at the age of 33, on 16th August 1977, Elvis Presley took 40 sleeping pills, committed suicide. He never woke up the next morning at the age of 36. With so much of valuables with him, fame, money, talent. A study says that 10 Michael Jackson cannot make one Elvis Presley. The greatest entertainer the planet has ever seen. He gave up his life. And that too at the age of 36. Mirabai did not commit suicide. <laughs> On the other hand, you would be surprised to know and you would be happy to know as well that today in India, there are more than 300 people who have done some research, some work, written some papers on the bhajans of Mirabai. They have got their MPhil degrees and PhD degrees and they with their families are living a good life. So Mirabai today, after 500 years, she has given life to 300 families. Elvis Presley took his life. Mirabai's bhajan gave life to 300 families. Because she had the biggest value. Payo ji mene Ram Ratan Dhan Payo. From where all the values descend. From where you get all the inspiration to imbibe values in your life. She had that. So Elvis committed suicide. And today on each and every bhajan of Mirabai, people live a good life on bread and butter for their family. So this is a perfect case study of values versus valuables. In other words, Mirabai versus Elvis Presley. <laughs> Same in the present stories. In the last five, seven days, you might be reading in the newspapers. Vinod Kamli searching a job. This is again Sachin versus Vinod Kamli. <laughs> if you want to name this topic. Both started together. 624 runs is their partnership. World record between the two. They played for three long days together. In his first test series in 1993, Vinod Kamli scored more than 700 runs in 10 or 11 tests. With two double centuries. Coach Achare Karji would always tell all his students that both of my students, that is Sachin Tendulkar and Vinod Kamli, would play for India. But I vouch for what for Vinod Kamli that he would play first and then Sachin will follow him. When Vinod Kamli used to bat, Coach Achrekar used to tell Sachin Tendulkar and another player, Anil Gurav. Stop us all the activities. Just watch him playing. He is coaching in action. The selection of shots. The footwork. But somehow we missed somewhere in life. Late night parties. Sometimes over drinking. Some bad company. And today we can see the difference between Sachin Tendulkar, the god of cricket. Adam Gilchrist was once asked, Sir, have you seen God? By an interviewer. He said, yes. And everybody was surprised. He said, I know very well that I have seen God. He plays at number four in India. <laughs> when the great Pakistan pacer Vakar Yunus, he retired. He was asked, the best batsman that he has ever bowled. He said, undoubtedly, Sachin Tendulkar. He was asked why. He said that against my flipper and reverse swing, 
around his legs he could play a glance even with a walking stick forget a bat if you give a walking stick in his hand sachin he can play a leg glance to my river sphinx this all accolades could have been earned by vinod kamli as well he had all the opportunities because he had all the talents again this topic after elvis presley versus mirabai sachin versus vinod kamli and i am not talking of the big name that mukesh bhai mentioned in his introduction at the start of it one brother at the height of the finance world and the other brother gone away so values have the power to create valuables valuables don't have the power to create values and values once possessed over attachment to it it has the power to distort your life at that time if you are strong on values you can reset your life values have the power to reset your life is the most important aspect another aspect of values versus valuables is that too much of run for valuables has sometimes in a reflection of our own self very clearly told us that we are less on being humans too much of valuable possession in your life make us less humans gives just a single direction run this is a 70 or 80 year game not more i think we all know it isn't it this is a 70 or 80 year game google owner larry page he at the moment is going for biomedical biomedics research he has a dream of lengthening the human life of 100 220 250 as well but at least this generation will not see it so let's keep it to 70 or 80 years too much run after valuables we lose on values in life so have a designed run so have a controlled run because the amount of money that you have in your bank account when you die is the extra work you did you shouldn't have done or if at all you did you should have used that money for a better cause or as mukesh bhai said kafan ko jeb nahi hoti ye aap samajh lo to values pe aa jaunga you will come on values values pe aap aa jaoge kafan ko kabhi jeb nahi hoti and 1.5 lakh people leave this earth every day that is every day 1.5 lakh people means 24 hours 86200 seconds every 2 seconds three people leave this earth we started this talk it is almost like half an hour 30 minutes that is 1800 seconds 2400 people left this earth and if for some reason god decides to put tomorrow's full concentration on ama membership <laughs> it is his choice always we are a speck of dust in this entire existence we are a speck of dust you know at least that much chalo that is a bigger philosophical statement that i used but at least we all know that in the map of amdabad our house doesn't have a place of even a dot yes or no chokhi deshi bhasha ma atli to khabar che ne ke amdabad no naksho bane ema apna ghar mate tapku mukvani jagya tar jor si bolo to we are not even a speck of dust in this entire existence why attitudes and egos for what reason just it is for one reason over possession of values make you egoistic and into an egoistic attitude when i talk to corporates i tell them that if you really introspect every third person sitting besides you is in some way more intelligent more talented more experienced than you do we all believe this 
Just raise your hands if you say yes. In some way it is there. When you have raised this hand, you have given up your attitude and ego from today, right? Gone in the air. Over possession, over infatuation, over run for valuables. You lose on values. There is a famous story, the vulture and the little girl. World famous photographer Kevin Carter was in Sudan to picture, to click some famine related shots. And the famous shot that you all might have seen is a small little Sudanese girl, unable to walk because she had not eaten since five, seven days. She was crawling but could not move. She was thirsty because she had not drank water for one or two days. And behind her, a vulture was slowly approaching her. A vulture was slowly approaching the little girl, waiting for the little girl to die so vulture could have his food. Kevin Carter saw this and he clicked this picture, which became world famous. And because of which, Sudan started having inputs of huge UN AIDS. After taking the picture, he straight away headed for the airport and went back to his country. And because of this picture, he was well lauded all over the world, major TV channels celebrating him. In one of the programs on the stage, the program included a small phone in program schedule. So one of the callers at that time called to ask a question to Kevin Carter. That, sir, after you took the picture, what happened to that little girl? And Kevin Carter said, sorry, I don't know what happened to her. I was in a rush. So after taking the shot, I rushed to the airport because it was my flight time. The person at the other end said, sir, I will put it this way, that at that time there were two vultures there. Oh. One had the beak, the other had the camera. You should have helped the little girl after taking that shot. She was struggling to reach the United Nations feeding center from where she could get water and food. You should have picked up that little girl and taken her there. Imagine that means if at all, at that very moment, if the vulture had pounced upon that little weak girl dying out of starvation, I think you would have clicked another picture and got more acclamation for that. That words of that phone in program person who called him took so much possession over Kevin Carter that he slipped into depression and ultimately committed suicide. Kevin Carter, the world famous photographer, would have been alive today had he taken that small little girl starving for food to the UN center, which was just a few meters away. Overrun for valuables. That means fame and money has made us less humans. We are less on valuables. You may try to possess the valuables that you want, but at the same time, you should not be less on values. Otherwise, you cease to be a human being. As simple as that. You cease to be a human being. A photographer once had a board on his studio that to click a photograph as you look, 20 rupees. To get a photograph clicked as you think you should look, 30 rupees. To click a photograph as you think people should be thinking of you, 50 rupees. How should you look in the eyes of people? After many years, he writes in his memory that 90% of the people who came to my studio wanted the rupees 50 photograph. <laughs> See, this is our common mentality. When we go to purchase even a t-shirt or a shirt or a pant, and after we choose it, during the time of choosing process, the first thought, faithfully, and keep your hand on your heart and tell me, the first thought is, how would I look in this? Isn't it? Tell me a faithful yes or no. Yes. My question to you all is, 
did you select that because you liked it or did you select that so but so that somebody else likes you wearing that first one is a value second one is a valuable so are you living a real life or a real life introspect we you are selecting your clothes and shoes because you like it how would i look in the eyes of people wearing this when you think of that you have not understood this topic that values are more important than valuables because if at all you think that how would i look like my that friend my that relative my that neighbor would like because he appreciates this color she likes this style whatever but if out of your 10 associates seven would appreciate at least two would feel <laughs> and your mood goes down and if you want to check it for yourself at the other end in a party or a gathering if somebody is constantly aware of what he or she has worn and the garments and the jewelry and everything if somebody is an experiment don't try it but it is theoretically right <laughs> you can go up to him or her and just tell in, in their ears jamta nahi hai yaar combination theek nahi hai the color combination isn't good your style jara theek nahi hai itna bolna and then after 5 10 minutes from a distant away you just look at the facial expressions and the body language all the energy would get drained of that person we are such cheap and mean minds because we bank for our personality on valuables we don't bank for our personality on values gandhi ji used to wear just an upper cloth and half dhoti but winston churchill the war time prime minister said i don't want to meet him i don't want to have a conversation with him and he used to tell the ics officers when you go to india you will be governors of huge huge provinces at the age of 25 and 26 smart ics officers you have the power to do everything in india don't do one thing don't talk to gandhi and sardar and this smart dynamic young ics officers would question winston churchill the man who gave us v for victory symbol during the world war 2 when adolf hitler was bombarding in london and he bombarded through 300 war planes and the it was carpet bombing whole of london was burning at that time he gave this symbol v for victory he was afraid of talking with gandhi he used to give this advice to ics officers don't talk to gandhi and this ics officers would tell why for what reason and winston churchill the war time prime minister of england would say that that these two people are so high on values so high on integrity so high on faithfulness to their ideologies and nation so much committed to the people of their country and they live a so simple life these are all great values that now listen carefully that in a 10 minute conversation across the table with sardar or gandhi after that they will throw a blank paper on your face command you to sign it and you will be so much mesmerized by their presence by their aura that even being an ics officer you would sign a blank paper and they will write the text after that they have the power to officially take your resignation and send you back to england power of values when our guruji pramukh sami maharaj met bill clinton in miami in florida in the year 2000 pramukh sami maharaj's age was 80 years a saffron clad person from india 80 years of age not being able to speak a single sentence in english imagine the 22 minute meeting between the two and bill clinton one of the most charismatic presidents of us 6 feet 3 inch height he was the governor of arkansas for about two or three terms and the midst of depression he had by his policies by his economic policies he had held the dollar and if you want to put his charisma it is in the line of george washington abraham lincoln john f kennedy such charismatic presence and the president of america is like the king of the world because the top 500 institutions of the world from imf to united nations to unicef to world health organization they run on american money dollar is that powerful and defense power r and d power of america is unbelievable 
they are the largest and the strongest economy of the world when bill clinton after the 22 minute meeting actually must have been just eight or nine minutes of conversation because bill clinton would talk in english one of our saints would that be an interpreter tell pramukh sai maharaj in gujarati pramukh sai maharaj would answer in gujarati or ask something in gujarati interpreter would tell that in english so in the 22 minute meeting it would just have been a seven or eight minute conversation in that bill clinton was so much impressed he said now i'm quoting him not just word to word but letter to letter bill clinton said i have not seen such expressive eyes full of integrity in my life in any terms on any day under any circumstances can any valuable impress the president of america but values have the power to impress the president of america in this attire by an 8 year old person not speaking a single word in english and pramukh sami maharaj towards the end of the conversation just held bill clinton's hand and in traditional gujarati he said i'm i'm just uh, quoting him letter to letter in his uh, uh, pious words pramukh sami maharaj said saheb amaru akshardham gandhi nagar jowa khas aujo <laughs> and the interpreter said that he is inviting you to swaminarayan akshardham at gandhi nagar bill clinton said when he is inviting i will come and he came <laughs> this is the power of values as winston churchill was impressed by gandhi and sardar bill clinton was impressed by pramukh sai maharaj to impress the president of america in the first meeting is not a joke eh? as i said he is the king of the world he will dream something tomorrow morning at 5 his time at 10 he can and if america goes with its full power in war with any country of the world within 72 hours it can bring that country to its knees it has that power that president getting impressed same happened with tony blair the then prime minister of england when they met pramukh sai maharaj same happened with uh, john major the ex prime minister of england when he was the prime minister and met pramukh sai maharaj and in 2015 our honorable prime minister narendra modi ji he tweeted on the 95th birthday of pramukh sai maharaj simple words but very expressive he said that i have learned some of the most valuable wisdoms of my life through my meaningful conversations with pramukh sai maharaj so when you have values in life you don't need valuables you don't need valuables people will create valuables in your name statue of unity when you have values in your life and sardar vallabhbhai patel passed away he was the deputy prime minister and the union home minister of india and he had just 735 rupees in his bank account because he had just 735 rupees in his bank account as the deputy prime minister of the union minister of india this 2200 crore statue of unity <laughs> had there been a few more zeros behind that 735 as normally happens today had there been a few more zeros behind that 735 this statue wouldn't have come up sorry that means values have the power to create valuables in your name unlimited possession of valuables don't have the power to create value of yours that is your place in the hearts and minds of people this is the power of values as i described integrity commitment helping people positivity faith these are all values in life even if you introspect if i give you a choice keep all the valuables that you have i give you 10 times of it but i'll take away your near and dear ones family members or friends or your hobbies even then you will be a, it will be difficult for you to survive the upper stage of that is values the most needed things in life so give more importance to values than valuables and if you have that basic way of living 
it is a very simple living with high thinking once pramukh sami maharaj had to change the uh, glasses of his specs because the numbers had changed so the person who had gone out to fetch the new ones he changed the frame as well when he gave this specs to pramukh sami maharaj pramukh sami maharaj as his routine offered it to hari krishna maharaj and then started and just started to have the use of it he saw that the frame has changed he asked why did you change the frame and the person said swami ji this frame is like 8 10 years old and as such we had to change the glasses we changed the frame as well out of his love and devotion towards his guru pramukh swami maharaj said very simple question see the person who is high on values and knows the distinguished power of values and the difference between values and valuables pramukh swami maharaj a simple question have i to see through the glasses or the frame very simple question but only a person on high on values can ask this question and we we can ask a very simple question to the same person ana thi sari marti thi ale atli to sari lai aayo pramukh swami maharaj asked have i to see through the glasses or the frame and the person said of course swami through the glasses swami ji said the frame was okay if the shopkeeper is ready to buy to get it that is if you can give it back to the shopkeeper please give it get the money back get the original frame and that is what happened what i mean to say is is a very good question if you don't remember anything else in this talk remember this one sentence have i to see through the glasses or the frame ask this question at many stages in your life ask this question to yourself a couple of times in a day see because a luxurious and a spacious office is your valuable but your punctuality is a value only then that valuable will stand <laughs> your luxurious central air conditioned house is a valuable but you faithful to your family relationships is your value only then that house will stand am i right or wrong your all the degrees on your visiting card is a good valuable but your commitment to those degrees is your value only then that visiting card will stand <laughs> so valuables are absolutely dependent upon values for their existence this is the most upper limit of things that i have said valuables are absolutely dependent on values for their existence values are independent so make a wise choice that you stand a good chance for a great change in your life god will not ask you the number of friends that you had on fb when you go there god will ask did you have a couple of friends that you can say that we are one soul in two bodies it's a value of friendship isn't it god will not ask that did you have the best of neighbors that you liked in your society god will ask did you become a good neighbor to somebody in your society isn't it so what i mean to say it is the values that create you values that define you and ultimately values that give you a final good position of self satisfaction and a place in the hearts and minds of people it is as simple as that the biggest of all values the mother of all values is faith in god from faith generates all the values shraddha once our guru shastri ji maharaj who created this bfps swami nand sanstha was confronted by an atheist he said that god doesn't exist our guru ji said god 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 does exist he said see it makes me no difference i am enjoying i am playing drinking being happy merry it's a good life for me Arghur Shastri Ji Maharaj said good life for me as well 
I'm performing my religious rituals, my arti, going to the mandir, darshan, scriptures. And he said, fine. Then what is the use? Like not enjoying your life in the worldly manners. Our Guru Shastra Ji Maharaj said a wonderful point. That today when you don't believe in God, you're also happy and fine. Okay, as you say. I believe in God and perform my rituals, I'm also happy. But when we both die, if God doesn't exist, you don't have any loss, neither I have. But if God exists, then I'm at an advantage. <laughs> if God exists, I'm at an advantage. You are at a loss. And that atheist says, Swamiji, then you are right. <laughs> so even considering a possibility like if, you should have a belief in him. A strong belief. How, want to, how, how many of you want to be a masterpiece of your life? How, want, how many of you want to make your life a masterpiece? Just raise your hands. Then you will have to be your master's piece. Did you get me what I said? If you want to make your life a masterpiece, you will have to be your master's piece. Only then you will master peace. And that masterpiece is obeying the commands of God. Having profound devotion towards Him. This is not because that I am a saint. I would talk of this. More than 50,000 research papers have been produced by men of science. How some element of religiosity, how some ritual of religiosity gives you physical, mental, and emotional advantages. University of Miami, they did a survey for 25 years. What is the advantages and disadvantages between a believer and a non-believer? A believer family and a non-believer family. 25 years of survey, they came to a conclusion that the believers had an advantage that the level of tolerance and acceptance of happenings and situations in life was found to be better in the believer's family than the non-believer's family. Isn't this a big advantage in life? Your level of tolerance and acceptance of happening, happenings in your life. Because I think all of us know that God has not signed an MOU with us. <laughs> that everything in your life Everything will be goody goody. Kisi ke paas MOU ho to jara uncha karna hat. Hum bhi dekh le kabhi. God has not signed an MOU. Life is like a box of chocolates. In, in 1996 when we were in United States for family shibirs with Pramukh Swami Maharaj. We were doing family shibirs sitting with the families. Sitting with the children, teenagers, youngsters. And so like at that time, there were less mobile phones. So if you call somebody on the landline, if the other person was engaged, there would be a cassette that you could hear on the, from the telephone exchange. And that would say, life is like a box of chocolates. At that time in the United States, they had created a gift pack for children to gift each other during birthdays. It's a box of chocolates, but there was no lid. There was no lid to it. You can only create a small hole and that hole of the size of a child's finger. So every morning the child has to put his finger inside that box and try to get one chocolate from it. And after a certain amount of like effort, he gets a chocolate. So it was a wonderful teaching of life for the child. That nothing is free. Nothing is free. You have to put an effort. And if somebody tries to give you free everything, he is going to destroy the nation. So nothing is free. Everything has to be acquired by efforts. So wonderful life uh, teaching lesson for a kid. But after that, the words were very beautiful. I specially asked a person to keep his phone engaged. Lift up the receiver so that I can hear it three, four times. So that I wanted to hear it. The words were wonderful. Life is like a box of chocolates. It, has, it doesn't have a lid. 
Just you can create a small hole, put your finger inside and try to get a chocolate. Now it was wonderful. Listen carefully. Every morning when you try to get a chocolate, you put an effort and get one out of that box, whether it is round, square or rectangle, whether it is with wrapper or without wrapper, whether it is yellow, green or red, whatever the taste, it is sweet or sour, whatever. When you get it, eat it and enjoyed it. At least I got a chocolate. If at all, not my choice, but I did get a chocolate today. Life is like a box of chocolates. Accept the happenings. Why did this happen with me? Wonderful question. Challenging God. <laughs> Why did this happen with me? So faith, this University of Miami survey said that believers had a better capacity of tolerance and acceptance of happenings in their life than the non-believers. The second advantage, believers had better self-control than non-believers. Again, a big advantage in life, a big value in life. Believers had better self-control than non-believers. Third thing, believers were better at pursuing short-time and long-time goals than non-believers. Simple survey, but a really big one to teach us that values are more important than valuables. Values are more important than valuables. Our Guru Hari Mahan Sami Maharaj was once in Ahmedabad. I'm just finishing in the last five minutes. A leading TV channel journalist, a senior person in that enterprise, he came up for personal darshan and blessings of our Guruji Mahan Swami Maharaj. And said that, Swamiji, I've attained every accolades that a journalist would ever dream of. In my field, I've been to heights beyond my imagination. I've won national international prizes and accolades. But I want to be a good human being. Can you give me a tip for that? Pram Mahan Swami Maharaj in simple words said, deep faith in God and obeying the commands of God makes you a wonderful human being. See, we are not God-fearing. That is a wrong term. We are God-loving. And when you love God, you always introspect. The thought in my mind at the moment, the attitude that I'm keeping at this moment, the expression of character at this moment, the use of words at this moment, will it please God? That constant introspection will make you a great human being on values. As simple as that. And it has power. When Dr. APG Abdul Kalam met Pramukh Swami Maharaj in the year 2000 in Delhi, he had come up with a five-point plan that Swamiji, me and my think tank have set together for days and months and hundreds of hours of brainstorming. We have come to a conclusion that if we want to make India a superpower, which our Honorable Prime Minister declared on the Independence Day, that by, by 2047, we want to make India a developed country. And we all have a responsibility for that. And what cannot be achieved by a population of 1.4 billion if we decide to go in this direction? We have the power. And we can do it. Dr. APJ Abdul Karam said, Swami, first sector that we need to work is education and health. Second is agriculture. Third is infrastructure. Fourth is communications. And fifth is critical technology. And then he said, Swamiji, you have traveled to 60 countries, 18,000 villages. You have met 40 lakh people personally and counseled them in your personal life. And you have created such a huge organization, BAPS, Swami Nand Sansa, as Mukesh Bhai said. Let me share with you that BAPS is one of the largest NGOs of the world with a permanent status in the United Nations as an NGO. I come from that organization. And all of you might have been to Akshardham. Just raise your hands. Akshardham at Gandhinagar or Delhi. You, all of you have been. We come from that organization. Gandhinagar Akshardham is a textbook, Delhi Akshardham is a library and the 265 acres Akshardham coming up at New Jersey in America is an encyclopedia. Huge, huge. 
We are coming up with such Akshardham campers in the heart of Abu Dhabi on the Dubai Express Highway. And that the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi gifted this 27 acres of land to BAP. It's first time in the history of this world that a huge such monument would come up. Akshardham like campus would come up in the middle of the desert on the, the Dubai Abu Dhabi that is Sheikh, Zay Sheikh Zayed Expressway. And he has gifted us. Why? Because of the values in the life of Pramukh Swami Maharaj. That he is an epitome of values. Such Akshardham campuses are coming up at Johannesburg in South Africa, at Sydney in Australia. Pramukh Swami Maharaj single-handedly created 1300 institutions of social service. Hospitals, hostels, schools, colleges, Sanskar Kendras, Akshardhams, community centers, Hari Mandirs and Mandirs. 1300. In a span of 45 years, from 1971 to 2016. That means every 15th day, he created an institute of social service and gifted to the society. Every 15th day of his life. Imagine every 15th day to get a land, to get it legally cleared, to decide what to do on it. Hospital, hostel, school, college, mandir. The board of trustees decide, we being a non-profit organization, we need to raise funds from the society. The architect decides the plan. The plans are passed in the local government bodies. The groundbreaking ceremony performed. Construction starts after dishing out the tenders. One tender passed and then accepted and the construction starts. Construction come, gets over. We get two, five people who are dedicated to the organization to run that institute. Or the 25, 50, 100 people as employees in that institute. And the inauguration ceremony done. And that institute put in the service of society. The whole story that I described. This story, Pramukh Swami Maharaj performed every 15th day of his life for 45 years. Just fifth standard pass, Pramukh Swami Maharaj. Why could he do this? And more than that, 1300 saints initiated by, by him. Like us, more than 750 of them are graduates, postgraduates, standard accountants, doctors, and engineers. Here is Hardik Sadak. Stand up at your place. He's, this is the first attire of a, of a youth who wants to have Diksha in BAPS. He's called a Sadak. He has to be in the probation period for three years. We are a well organized structure. Nobody can walk in and have saffron in BAPS. A runaway cannot. Three years of rigorous training, probation period. Then he is into first white robes. Another two years into white robes. And then he gets saffron. Another two years into saffron. Seven to eight years of training period at our place in Sarangpur. Then he is posted somewhere in the world for duties. And Hardik is an IIM Indoor graduate. He is a ranker. And after being IIM Indoor graduate, he has preferred this way of life for a, to give, teach values to the society. So Mukesh Bhai, I am giving you a speaker on your 30th year of celebration. <laughs> you can well introduce him. I have told you this is why I have told you that you have to say 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 that ज्यादातर लोग सं, समाज में संसार में जब संत को देखते हैं तब यही ये बिचारा ये पहले ही वो बेचारा बन जाता है आने बिचारा ने फाव्यू नहीं होन जामू नहीं होन बिचारो रखड़ी पड़े होन कहीं परिवार नहीं होन बड़े नहीं होन इतने यहां भी गो बीएपीएस इज अ डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इमेजिन अ फिफ्थ स्टैंडर्ड पास प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज गिविंग दीक्षा टू 1300 सच यूथ्स बी एच छोकरा उन तो घर में कंट्रोल में रखो इतने खबर पड़ सके इतने थाई by the age, by the time your son and daughter becomes 18, 19, and 20, about 10 to 25 times you people as parents just clap their clap your hands and say, Ana karta to. <laughs> fill in the gap. <laughs> and Pramukh Sai Maharaj and today Mohan Sai Maharaj taking care of 1300 of us. 
what i mean to say a person may be less on valuables education academics possessions high on value is a different character he is a magnet he can attract all kinds of resources and he can make things happen bhulthi amdavad na koi builder ne pujjo to khara ke delhi ma akshar dham delhi ma yamuna nadi na kinare kok tamne 110 ekar jagya ape to 5 varsh ma develop karo na karo thai ke na thai and that to a non commercial and a non residential project na bandhin vechvanu no tu and that to of stone and carvings and he did it in 5 years it's a world record a person just fifth standard pass could do this and that to born and raised in a very ordinary village but high on values remember this sentence this is a second sentence you need to carry in your hearts a person high on values can attract all the resources in his service as simple as that person high on values can attract all the valuables in his service and pramukh swami maharaj's life is an ultimate epitome of it so when faith in god is the mother of all values it has the power to generate many values in your life so keep faith even if you don't believe do it mechanical but do it if you don't believe in god even then stand in front of the god bhagwan madhur saru kar jo do it mechanical everything is not logic logic will give you more valuables faith will give you more values in life it is as simple as that and we don't go by value we don't go by logic everywhere if somebody says yaar tu jis ladki ko prem karta hai wo to kali hai choti hai patli hai chashme wali hai what would you say jo bhi hai mere liye rani hai as simple as that isn't it aap mein se koi i just want to ask you a simple question जो लॉजिक वाले उनको मैंने ये दूसरी बात करना चाहता हूँ हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव वॉक्ड इनसाइड द क्रिकेट फील्ड एंड साइड दैट हु डिजाइन हु दिस थ्री स्टम्प्स हु डिसाइडेड दिस थ्री स्टम्प्स व्हाई नॉट टू एंड व्हाई नॉट फोर फर्स्ट गिव मी द लॉजिक बिहाइंड थ्री स्टम्प्स ओनली देन आई विल स्टार्ट माई बैटिंग किसी ने यह प्रश्न कभी पूछा था आज तक याद भी नहीं आया होगा चलो आज मैंने आपको बुद्धि दी कल सुबह जाके पूछना क्रिकेट ग्राउंड पे अंपायर को पूछना अपोजिशन टीम को पूछना फर्स्ट आई शुड नो द हिस्ट्री द बैकग्राउंड द पर्सन ऑथोराइज समबडी टू डिसाइड द नंबर ऑफ स्टम्प्स द पर्सन डिसाइडेड थ्री आफ्टर दैट व्हाट वाज द एक्सेप्टेंस कमिटी ये सभी के नाम मुझे चाहिए फिर मैं क्रिकेट खेलूंगा अगर ये विचार से गए ग्राउंड पे तो क्रिकेट का आनंद ले सकते हो क्रिकेट का आनंद क्यों लिया आपने पूरे जीवन क्योंकि ये लॉजिक नहीं चलाया इसलिए तो ये ऊपर भी वो लॉजिक मत चलाना कि पहले मुझे प्रूफ मिले फिर मैं श्रद्धा रखू क्रिकेट में नहीं चलाते हो तो फिर वहां क्यों चलाते हो क्रिकेट में चलाया नहीं लॉजिक तो आनंद आया यू एंजॉय द गेम बिफोर यू बिकॉज यू डोंट यू डिट गो फॉर लॉजिक इन द सेम वे इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एंजॉय लाइफ डोंट गो फॉर लॉजिक देर एक्सेप्ट इट यू विल एक्सपीरियंस एवरीथिंग सो एवरी मॉर्निंग वी ब्रश आर टीथ विथ टूथ ब्रश every morning we must brush our heart mind and soul with a truth brush and the ultimate truth brush is this so i talked of three values first is ultimate wisdom in life niti mai jeevan second i talked about positivity in life full of integrity in life and that helps you create your character and personality and third thing is faith in god a value based life is cherished by everybody everybody we all isn't it we all cherish a value based life we must try for it we must definitely try for it a small try can produce a big result my innermost prayers at the feet of bhagwan swami narayan my guru pramukh swami maharaj and mahan swami maharaj to inspire all of us you and me i talking doesn't mean that i have all the values in my life okay this is just a caring and sharing for each other so inspire us with all the values and lastly i invite you all to visit our festival from 15th december to 15th january on aspiring road between bhadaj and ongraj crossroads 
is a 600 acre cultural city coming up ahmedabad ya gujarat ne ye kabhi nahi dekha hai they have not seen it you keep this words in your mind and when you visit that 600 acre campus a cultural city beautiful exhibitions wonderful german domes temperature control on family values anti addiction azadi ka amrit mausam and the joy of others we'll have professional conferences of chartered accountants doctors engineers every day we have the light and sound show 16 folk dances of 16 states will be continuously performed on the satellite stage from morning evening to morning 9 to evening 9 any time of the day you walk in you can have a few folk dances being performed and you can see it every evening 25000 people assembly in the presence of mohan sai mal who is who of the world some of them are confirmed but it's 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 like a grip it's like my hands that i cannot uh, declare the names but who is who they are going to grace the festival as speakers they will uh, express their ideas people will learn from it their felicitations a children's park on tens of acres of land handled absolutely by children 1500 children of bapas in one dress enrichment entertainment enlightenment for your children and the glow gardens that you saw in abu dhabi and dubai in the expo tens of acres of glow gardens thematic glow gardens for the first time in the world at by 7 pm from 15 december to 15 january after 7 pm it would be a different world there and for that our 40000 volunteers have registered themselves and for that the builders and developers of ahmedabad have shared very happily 8500 apartments with us to house this volunteers it's a mega festival that ahmedabad or gujarat will ever see so my innermost invitation to all of you on behalf of bapas definitely join with your family and i assure you this is a routine for us such festivals of this of this size and this scale we have 100000 1.25 lakhs 1.5 lakh people visiting every day no stampede no chain pulling nothing because more than like about 1000 cctv cameras will man the whole festival so it's a wonderful thing my invitations thank you very much for patiently listening to me and all my prayers for all of you actually that's what i was telling you swami ji that uh, there was absolutely no need for a question hour because whenever you talk you know it's interaction personified you know in all respects and you have absolutely friends i would request you 2 3 friends. minutes of a heartfelt gratitude that i would request uh, dr savan muria wala to please Swami Ji, Jai Swami Naran. Uh, good evening, friends. I think yeah, you answered much many more questions than it would have come from the audience here. Swami Ji mentioned that you know uh, uh, and respected Swami Ji, Pujya Swami Ji. You mentioned that Pramukh Swami Ji, Pujya Pramukh Swami has created so many institutions. But after hearing you, we feel that there are thirteen hundred more institutions like you that are also there, not just the physical institutions that we can see. what you mentioned it was absolutely awe inspiring it was the universe of wisdom you know universal wisdom but it was universe of wisdom that you and and swami ji i could also say that you mentioned no gandhi ji blank paper if you ask probably 450 here will sign off a blank paper after hearing you for for this much time and absolutely <laughs> swami ji told us of course and you know whether he, it's about seeing through glass or the framework but then then he also gave us the framework frame but framework also and the glass to see through it also and certainly you did a purity or a wash our mind with the stories of the walsh that that what what are the values that we need to carry if we have to live beyond our life and swami ji i think the the stories of walsh and mirabai and sachin certainly uh, absolutely appealing Uh, of course uh, swami ji i would not naturally not take any time but your wisdom your words of wisdom and the take away that you gave it to us niti my jeevan the moral that we have to is absolutely taken and we we are so happy and so lucky and so thankful to you for giving us this wisdom and we are thankful to of course mahendra bhai for the A mamta ama wisdom uh, uh, center that he has sponsored thanks to 
press thanks to all of you and i'll give swami ji a memento as a token or rather mami ji a token of love as, uh, uh, as for, for coming here raising the please thank you friends yeah tomorrow we request you to join for this uh, you know silver jubilee celebrations which goes on for 5 days tomorrow at 6:30 same venue thank you